Let us read from the third chapter of the letter to the Ephesians. Ephesians 3, 1, and then we will jump to verse 14 from the same chapter. For this reason, I... Let us read from verse 19 from chapter 2. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, and whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. Verse 14, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his Spirit and the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we think, that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, to all generations forever and ever. Amen. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ." from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. So two things, my dear brethren, are the issues and the matters that God gives away freely and abundantly. First of all, the love of God the Father, and secondly, the Church of Jesus Christ. We are dealing in our Christian life with God the Father and with Jesus Christ. God the Father is the one that unites us makes us one church through Jesus Christ which is knit together by God himself in a unique way of wisdom and understanding that is divine where 
He takes people that are completely different from one another. He brings them close. He unites them. And he makes them one body. As my body and your body is. Flesh, blood, bones, heart, kidneys. And he unites all these things. God the Almighty unites all these things and makes them one but one body. This is the knitting together that only God can do. And, and Paul feels, and he knows, that he is a prisoner of Jesus Christ. In prison, that is, for the Gentiles, for which God called them and Christ sent them. And now, as the Apostle Paul recognizes, the commandment of God and the work of God in our life is not done except through prayer on our knees. For the, and that is why he prays for us. So that the work of God may be done in our life. So that we may enjoy the work of the Almighty in our life. With the final purpose of us being filled with all the fullness of God. All the fullness of God dwelt in Christ. In God. Sorry, in Christ. Now the Apostle Paul prays on his knees that we should be filled with all the fullness of God. Do you understand what the Word of God says? All the fullness of God will dwell in us and we who are insignificant may dwell in the fullness of God. But this thing, my dear brethren, is not something that we are able to think of, nor can we ask for it. We do not know. <laughs> Only the Apostle Paul, the Word of God, knows, and that's why he prays so that we may know it also and live it and enjoy it. For that reason, he says, I bend my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That only He is able. Only He is willing. And only to Him can we direct our questions. So I speak to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ that He may give you according to the riches, not from the riches because when I have something I give something when I have a lot again I give something but may God give according to the measure of the of his glory to every one of us do you understand what the gift of God is that he may give to every one of us according to the wealth of the glory of God that is the greater that the glory of God is so much more does God give in us, and I'll say it in truth. The more that God is glorified in our life, the more God does in our life. Depending on His glory in our life. How much you glorify Him and how you glorify Him, we will see. But how much do you glorify Him? With your works, with your words, with your thoughts, with your life, with your walk. And he begins the work of God. I repeat, according to the measure of the wealth of his glory. His glory. That you may be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. And from what he cares about, and that's where the word of God begins, is that the inner man is strengthened by the Holy Spirit. He does not care about the outward man, even though it is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But what he cares about is the eternal man. It's the inner man. He doesn't want us to have arms, strong arms. Not that, the bene that uh, um, working out is not beneficial. It is, but for a bit. But what we must do is strengthen our inner man. And we cannot be trained so that the inner man can obtain power. We can pray, though. 
so that by the Holy Spirit God may strengthen the inner man, the spiritual man, that is born of the Spirit, who is a spirit, not the carnal man, who was born of the flesh and his flesh. The Apostle Paul prays, and Jesus Christ prayed back then, now the Apostle Paul then, and Jesus Christ now, but also we. So help us, Lord God. What did we say in the beginning? We can do nothing on our own. How much more than this Christian journey of us, which is steps, steps of growth and increase. And everything begins from the establishment, from the strengthening by the Holy Spirit, from the fullness of the Holy Spirit in the inner man, so that only if the inner man is strengthened will Christ be able to dwell through faith in our heart that he may sing and say, Abba, Father. If he is not strengthened and established, he has to be established and grow in the power of the Holy Spirit because the outer man fades, but the inner man is renewed, but that is not enough. The inner man must be established. And we will see what this journey of the Christian means so that Christ may dwell in us through faith that we may be able. This is the first result, that we may be able. Being rooted in God, in the presence of God, and grounded in the presence of God. What does rooted mean? We are being fed through our roots by the presence of God. Grounded, and steadfast, and immovable, being established in the presence of God so that we may be able along with all the rest of the saints, to comprehend what first the width is, that is, the love of God that wants all people to be saved. The width of God. There is nothing outside the presence of God, but also the length, eternity, beginning and end, Alpha and Omega. From eternity to eternity, my dear brethren, only the Christian whom God has called can understand the love of God that covers all, but also the length, the eternity. We are a part of eternity. Before the foundation of the world, He chose us. Forever and ever we shall reign. Do you understand what God is doing in your life? He is revealing to you the length of the mysteries of God, but also the depth. As he says that God revealed to us all things. For by the Holy Spirit, we know all things, even the depths of God, the mysteries of God. This is what God wants to make, and Paul prays. So this can happen in my life, in your life. That I may know the width, the the volume, the length, the eternity, the depths, the mysteries of God, and the height up to the third heaven. What is this knowledge, my dear brethren? What amazing knowledge this is that never ends. It begins today and it will grow and grow and grow with one condition. The law, the command of the father and the law of the mother. And then, when you get to know, but that you may know from revelation. It's not something you can be studied or described. God himself will come to lead you when you walk to protect you when you sleep, and to teach you when you're awake. By revealing and strengthening and blessing you in all things. A new, great space, depth, width, breadth, length of the will of God, the glory of God, 
the exceeding wealth of the glory of God for you who are useless and me who is even more useless. God comes and reveals through his word. He shows us that I am able to reveal all my mysteries to you. I want to reveal all things to you. Are you willing? And we say, Lord, have mercy upon us. What else can we say? Do we want to have mercy upon us, Lord Jesus? And then you will know the love of Christ that is beyond all revelation. That is beyond all knowledge. Length, width, breadth, depth. Beyond all knowledge is the revelation of the love of God. And when the love of Christ, what it means, what it is revealed to you, when you come into the understanding what the love of Christ means, then, my dear brethren, God became man. And he came to the, down to the lowest parts of the earth. Just imagine the Almighty God this is love, and we cannot understand it. Forever and ever we'll be comprehending this love. The Almighty God took the form of a bondservant. He humbled himself to the ground. He crucified himself. He was shed. He was whipped. He was scorched. For you. My, my, my. It's unbelievable, my brethren. And when you understand the love of Christ that surpasses all revelation, then the plan of the Almighty God will be concluded. Then He will fill in you. He will fill you with all His glory, His power, and His strength. All the fullness of the Godhead bodily. All the fullness of the Godhead will come and dwell in your body. That's it. The mind shuts off after this. The one who cannot fit in the whole universe. The heavens of heavens cannot fit him. Yet he comes and humbles himself and says, I want to come and dwell inside you, my child. Do you want to come and dwell with me? And we again say, have mercy upon us, Lord. What can we say? Amen. What shall we say? What shall we say? What can we say? Other than glory, hallelujah, this is madness. But all these things happen simply and truly within the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. And you go in through the law of your mother. Now be careful, now that Christ has added you into his church, see how you walk. Make sure that you walk worthily of the calling that we heard. Worthy of the calling with which we were, you were called. Beware with all humility. Realize before this glory and this greatness, this grandeur, realized how small and insignificant you are you are and stop speaking let me stop talking let me stop looking around and saying only down our eyes to the ground with all humility with meekness with long suffering with patience in other words suffering one another in love by preserving the unity of the Spirit with the bonds of peace. That is the Church of Christ. These are the members of the body of Christ. This is the true Church. In other words, what a, from what is the true Church made of? By humble, peaceful people who have long-suffering and are patient. And what is, so what are they made up of? I repeat, by insignificant people who are nothing. P 
people who have understanding of their insignificance. God is right when he says, no man is worthy of his word. This is who we are, my brethren, and this is who we must remain. And what is the church of God? One body. That is unity. One spirit. One body, the body of Christ. One spirit, the Holy Spirit. One hope of the rapture of the church. One Lord of Jesus Christ. One faith, the gospel of Christ. One baptism, the circumcision of Christ. And finally, one God and Father. The seven characteristics of the church. They can't become eight, nor can they become six. One body, one spirit, one hope, one calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God the Father. This is who we are. What can we add? What can we think of? That I'm a bit better than you? A bit more handsome, a bit greater than you, more significant than you? What can we answer to this? We are just empty tin cans that God took us and transformed us into vessels of choice. That is how we came in, as empty tin cans. And God, the Lord, transformed us into vessels of His choice. But let us never forget... That we are empty tin cans. Because if the presence of God departs just for a bit. Then again our nakedness will be revealed. Of the body, soul and spirit. And if that were not enough. But in every one of us. For every one of us. Has been given. By God through Jesus Christ. The grace according to the measure of the gift of God. Again, according to the measure. Grace has been given you according to the measure of the gift of Christ, which is the love of Christ. What has Christ done for everyone and everything? What is the gift of Christ? Everything. According to the measure of Christ's gift, you have been given grace. So that it is written that he ascended on high. He led captivity captive. He, he captured our captivity from the devil because we were all captives of the devil. And he went and destroyed the works of the devil. He captured the captivity that had us tied. And it's not enough that he delivered us. But he also gave us gifts. Lord God. Spiritual gifts my dear brethren. He gave us heavenly spiritual gifts. In his church. It says elsewhere. Another he called an apostle in his church. Some prophets. Some evangelists. Some pastors and teachers. So he gave ministries in the church. Why? Because he cared. Christ cares. This is our mother. The one that we read here is our mother. The church of Christ to which Christ gave ministries and gifts. As he freed us from captivity and he added us into one church that is made up of one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism and one God the Father. All are unique in the church of God. You are unique also in the church of God. Everything is unique in the church of God. And to his church, Christ gave ministries so that we may be equipped, that we may be taught by Christ. For the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. 
We, you all, have a service. You have a ministry. So you can serve and the edifying of the body of Christ. We all have a part. We all have a role. Without any exception. Because Christ has given gifts to all people. He has led captivity captives to all. He freed us because only whoever Christ sets free is free indeed. Until we end up, what is the purpose now of the church? The purpose of God is what? The fullness of the Godhead to dwell in us. The purpose of God is what? If Christ is what? That we may end all end up in the unity of faith. First of all, the unity of understanding of the Son of God. Secondly, so that we may all come to the age of a perfect man to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The equipping of the saints. Unity of faith. Acknowledgement of the Son of God. This is what Christ does with His ministries. He equips the saints for the unity of the faith and for the understanding of the Son of God. Why? That we should no longer be children. Remember the wicked woman and the seductress woman that the devil used to pull us out of this grandeur of the glory of God, the Father, the grace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. So that we are no longer children, so that we are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. So there is the craftiness and the trickery of men and there is the deceitful plotting of the devil. There is the wicked woman. There is also the seductress woman. Human deceitfulness, the deceitfulness of men and the deception of the devil. False doctrine is a deceit of the devil. It is a heresy of perdition. Bad doctrine is the wickedness of men. And be careful in the church. In the church. May God keep us. The result. Speaking the truth in love. May we grow up in all things. With the doctrine of the truth. With love. Truth has results when it coexists with love. And love has results when it co coexists with the truth. You cannot have the truth separately. There's no result. You cannot have love separately. There's no result. Only truth, more correctly, faith and love that works has results. So when we all work Everyone individually. We have been given two things in the Church of Christ. From the law of our mother. The truth and love. The teachings of the truth. With love. And love with doctrines of the truth. Then we are able to increase and grow in him in all things we can grow ourselves and others because we are giving a ministry a service you have a service by speaking the truth and love you may grow in yourself in your family in your children your brethren the church let us build one another only with the truth and love only with love in the truth. Let us grow in him in all things. Who is the head? Who is Christ? We grow in, through, in all 
things within the church whose head is Christ. So in other words, my dear brethren, we are not infants in the church. We are not st static. We are become we are trained, we grow, we increase as we said, rooted and grounded as a tree that increases constantly. A healthy tree grows and grows and grows and never stops. And a building continues to build until it reaches the building, until it reaches its height, but not like Babel, like a church of Christ. And the church of Christ continues to be of one tongue and one voice, one word and one voice of the Holy Spirit. The result is He, that is Jesus Christ, who joins and knits together with joints, the whole body with joints, and every member of the body according to the measure of the gift that has been given Him, so every member may add to the growth and increase of the body, but also to the body and growth of himself with love. So my brethren, the Church of Christ, our Mother's Law, is something, my dear brethren, that is alive. It has life. It has growth, non-stoppable growth. We do not reach an age where our growth stops. We reach an age of the fullness of Jesus Christ that continues to grow. Because we will continue to know Christ forever and ever. The love of Christ surpasses our knowledge, all knowledge and all revelation. Whatever has been revealed to you, the love of Christ is above it all. So just think of one church that Christ will create that is holy, perfect, without a spot or wrinkle or any of the sort, that he will come to receive a church that is made up of people who are insignificant, worthless, useless, but who he joined them together into one body with Christ as the head, with the Holy Spirit being its power, and all these, as they are one body, they have one spirit, you don't have another spirit and I have a different spirit. One spirit, the Holy Spirit. One hope, the rapture of the church. We do not hope anywhere else. One faith. The gospel of Jesus Christ. One Lord. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, our Lord and our God. One baptism. One circumcision. All the Israelites were circumcised. All the Christians are circumcised with the circumcision of Christ. As through baptism we have taken off the body of the sins of our flesh. And finally, one God and Father for us all. Who prevails over us all. He works through all. And He dwells in all. He rules over all, He acts through all, and He dwells in us all. And why does God dwell in us? Because God is working that we may be established in the inner man, etc., etc. And so within this miracle that is called love of the God, God the Father, grace of Jesus Christ, and fellowship of one another within this miracle that is called the Church of Jesus Christ, every member, as it is, as the body, as God joins within the body the members, all the members, so that every member, according to the measure of the gift that he has received from Christ, who went up and after he captured captivity he gave us gifts every member 
according to the measure, according to the grace, according to the gift that has been given him, that he may be able to add to the growth and building up of the body of Christ so that you may grow and be built up also. That you may grow and edify yourself. An amazing mystery, my dear brethren. God, the Church of Christ, but also the fellowship of one another. <clears throat> but you know something, my dear brethren? Now we know in part. We prophesy in part. It is revealed in part, but when we'll be find ourselves there, and we will know what is perfect in all these things, that we hear them now and study them, our heart is crushed. There we will experience them all, not by faith, like now, but by sight. My beloved brethren, we will reign over all the powers of the earth forever and ever. This is the work that God does in our life, and this is the work that Christ does in the church and all these things by the Holy Spirit, so that He may make us stand and reign forever and ever over all powers with Him. Before this greatness, before this mystery, before this glory, what can you say, O vain man, O insignificant man? What else can we say other than, Blessed be your name, Lord. Glory to your name, Lord. What else can we say, my brethren, other than glory, 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 thanksgiving? I can't even give thanks. I can only give glory before these great things that God does so that he may bring us up there so that we may reign forever and ever. For that reason, my beloved brethren, let us not look at our weaknesses, nor of others. Let us not, we're insignificant, we're wretched, we're vile, what can we do? This is who I am, I'm wretched, I'm vile, I'm useless, I'm nothing. But God brought me to the church. This is who you are. But God called you and called me and added me to the church. And all us who are wretched and vile, who are insignificant, He makes us one body, body of Jesus Christ. A church that is, in, that is perfect. And we shall reign with Jesus Christ forever and ever. Glory be to God. Amen.